All right, so let's get some basic understanding of this machine. So I'm gonna have a seat. You're not gonna see my face through much of this because it's me explaining how this machine works. So one, it works very similar to an industrial sewing machine for fashion. This type of machine, which is a high post, is used for three other things other than wigs. They're used for handbags, shoes, hats. So think of that as accessories. Handbags, shoes, hats. And then your fourth is wigs. The reason why you can use this with wigs or this high post machine, because what this is is a piece that's added to it. This is the high post, so you kind of see it. Well, I'll show you because on this one, we're uh, maintenance in this. So this is a high post. So again, it's used for those four things. What makes one of the four things you use it for to make wigs is this dome piece that's attached to this industrial machine. Now, industrial machines are not the same as home sewing machines. They operate the same way, but these machines happen to move a lot faster. So there's two things you need to practice when you ever get on these machines. You need to practice, one, controlling the machine, and that's based off your speed. So these pedals, depending on how they're actually um, put together, which the three of us, we actually put this machine these both of these machines together. But based off the pedal and how it's actually connected, you see this here is the connector to the pedal. So when you press it, it pulls this lever and this is like your brake. So you can tighten it to make the brake a little tighter or you can loosen it to make it loose. So it just depends on how you um, adjust this so that you can control it. You cannot move fast if you cannot control the machine. So these machines move very fast. I do have two sewing machines at home that uh, move pretty fast, but I can control it because the pedal is a little bit different and it's not running off this motor. That's a motor. So it's not running off that motor. Everything is electrical. There's your on and off button switch. And this is your hand dial to be able to, it runs with the motor and everything underneath there. So industrial is exactly what this is for. Stitch length, tension in here, it is actually threaded the exact same way as most industrial machines are. So there's your tension threader, and then it goes through your take up. And what I mean by your take up is that little loop. So it's the same as a home sewing machine, threading it all the way down into the needle. Your bobbin case is underneath here. So I'm gonna see if I can push that aside. Hold on, I'll put my camera down so you guys can see what I mean. I'll put the camera right there. There we go. So. Inside of here is where the bottom is. So if I lift this up, yeah, that's the bobbin. So you have to thread the bobbin, which you would thread the bobbin on this. So there's your bobbin piece, your bobbin casing. You thread it on here. It loops all the way around and it only goes through this. Press it in and it'll wind on its own with no issue and the needle won't move. Once you're done, thread it how you usually would, and you actually sew on this just like it's a sewing machine. It's no different from home sewing machines. Uh, it's a straight stitch. Um, one thing about sewing machines at home or home-based sewing machines, um, they have other stitches like zigzag stitch and all of that stuff. So that's the only difference. This one is completely straight stitch. Most of your industrial machines um, that are for mass producing, whatever the product is, usually is a straight stitch for construction. So I'll show you, I'll show you guys the wig that I just finished, which happens to be this one. So uh, this is what it looks like on the inside. So depending on your caps and everything, but the whole purpose is for it to attach the wefts onto the cap this is completely marketable here in South Africa because we're about to go back into the old school methods of wig making. 
because it's not actually in the states, you know, everything is lace frontals. So we're starting to see that pulling back because of cost and hair loss, which is my focus. So we're kind of going back to the old techniques. So I had to go back and, you know, like do some more research and, and also uh, bring back the old techniques that I've had on videos already on it. So this is exactly what we're just using the four by four closure on. And this is an example of one that I'm gonna have to take a loose because it's the incorrect pattern for the weft, the type of weft that's being attached to it. And that's why it's causing this rippling. So we'll, we'll discuss that at another time. But this is exactly what this is for. High post sewing machines are not just for wig making. They are for handbags, purses, and shoes. So yeah, I just want to break down what this is. It's just a sewing machine. This actually lifts the presser foot. So see if it lifts the presser foot. Even though it does have in the back a lever that you could lift to lift the presser foot. So when it's mass production, the point is to go fast and to get as many products done as much as possible. So that's the purpose of industrial machines. But yeah, so just wanted to Give you a cap on these machines. Uh, we got these overseas. Um, China, uh, I believe this brand, I'm not exactly sure. It might be discontinued, but yeah, that's where we got them from. They're very expensive, so think about it. Make sure you do your research on the purchase. I will see you guys next video or next clip. Stretch the cap too, just let it lay forward. Mm -hmm. You're going to take it all the way to the end as best you can. <laughs> That's how I control it. Backstitch. <laughs> this machine is fast. This one's faster than this one. We might just go back to that one. Oh, it, it did it for you. It's, yeah, loosen or tighten it. of days before I did some layouts and I like to plan things ahead of time so I tend to do everything by hand first before I even start to use um, any type of apps or software to complete everything this is just me drawing out everything just lining out or outlining how we're gonna place closures how we're gonna um, place wefts everything so um, I put this in at the end part of it because it's all technical. The next couple of clips that you're going to see is all technical stuff that I do. So I've been teaching fashion design and manufacturing and industrial manufacturing for a long time and I have been doing specification packs. In this case, you see I'm actually training on how to resize caps. So we have a average 22 um, head and then this is a 20 inch, I believe, um, canvas head. So sometimes 
sometimes you may need to outsource your caps. We are going to be designing our own caps. You'll see that in a couple of clips, but this is just me training on resizing caps. Uh, the um, people that I were training for the production of wigs, mass production of wigs, they already have a fashion background. So here, this is where I'm using Illustrator. I teach Illustrator classes, I teach Photoshop classes, web design classes, Ecology Creative Studies. So here I'm actually just using Illustrator to recreate a kind of like a, a flat. So in the fashion industry, we call mannequins or um, fashion figures as flats when we need to do patterns and pieces and things like that for garments. So I'm actually doing the exact same thing for caps when we're designing, when we get ready to design our own wig caps. So I'm just using Illustrator, the tools and everything to recreate from an image that I found on Google, Google, <laughs> sorry, and I'm just recreating it myself from there. So now from that draft of creating the um, visual head for it, this is me just giving a rough draft of how we're going to design our wig caps. So I'm actually copying from a wig cap that's already been constructed that we got from a previous uh, beauty supply store in Johannesburg, so South Africa. So I'm just kind of laying out what the pieces are going to be, what they might slightly look like, and I'm doing this all in Illustrator as well. So again, you see me doing things by hand once more, as you see, analyzing a cap that's already made, um, pulling it apart by pieces, looking at it more so as pattern pieces that you have for clothing. You can do the exact same thing for caps. It's just like making hats and purses and shoes and things like that. So just kind of piecing everything together and getting ready to take measurements and kind of cross-reference them based off the sizing. So those that I am training, they're going to be helping me with this aspect. So I'm just kind of drawing it out and then I start with the measurements and then I cross-reference it with them. And then here I am making the final um, changes to how the cap is going to look. I'm doing it all in um, Illustrator once again, just making sure everything is lined up and it looks similar to the caps that we did outsource and we're going to kind of change it up i'm going to be designing our caps a little bit differently hopefully i'll be able to show you guys a video of how i'm doing that but i have to keep some of the design a little bit secret because this is specifically for this particular company which i cannot name so yeah that this is how i design um, on the technical aspect when it comes to wig making and so here we are finalizing the pieces. Um, I have all of this in front of me. So I'm actually finalizing the pieces for the caps, your center piece, your side piece. Here I'm working with the lower nape piece of um, most wig caps. And then you're going to see me start designing the ear tabs. That's what this little small piece is. It was a lot of work trying to get it exactly the way it should be, as you can see. Or you may not be able to see, but I'm actually going by specific measurements when I'm using Illustrator. I'm not just freestyling this. Everything has to be according to a measurement because we are going to be printing these and using them um, to create patterns or cut patterns when we use the Cricut. So this is just a quick example of what the pattern pieces so far looks like. 
All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was only three videos for this entire series with me out in Johannesburg, South Africa, training for mass production of wigs. So um, it's not just the making of wigs, it's the technical aspect of it, it's budgeting, it's more. Um, I'm actually sitting here working on some more specification um, information that they need in order to budget and put everything together. Uh, I may be out there again sometime this year, so you guys know I will definitely record again. But this is not necessarily a new venture. This is somebody I have been working with before for years now. And we're just coming to this point where now we're doing it on an industrial level and taking I'm taking my knowledge and skill of manufacturing out into South Africa. So I hope you enjoyed it. So with all that being said, check out my website, wigmaking101.com. I do teach wig making classes using your home sewing machine. You can do this. Um, the reason why I'm teaching it because it's my, um, my, it's my goal is to help people who enjoy wearing wigs, um, who actually are cosmetologists or more so let's just say stylists, who service clients that enjoy wearing wigs, that enjoy looking different, that enjoy having their hair done. And they also deal with clients who have hair loss issues, whether they are trying to um, prevent hair loss or they are in the middle of treatments for hair loss. Um, I will be talking with a few trichologists on this aspect of it and making it more available to those that actually do that in the medical aspect. So, but as for now, I just teach people how to make wigs. I train companies on mass production of wigs and then I teach everyday people or stylists on how to make wigs. So check out my website, wigmaking101.com. I have online courses and I also have in-person classes, one-on-one -on -one if you need hands-on. So if you would like to um, be a part of that, you can check out on my website. I have the uh, courses already scheduled for um, March, April, and May. So you can go ahead, go to the website, look for the schedule. Uh, make sure I put a link down below in the description box. You can get hands-on, one-on-one training with me. Everything as far as tools for you is provided for you. Um, the only thing you would have to make sure you have is your own hair and your own sewing machine. Um, I will say the Brother brand sewing machines is one of the best for wig making. It's the best for sewing in general, but you can also use any other so brand of sewing machine that you have. But um, that would be the only thing I would suggest that you bring is your own hair, your own sewing machine. All the other tools are provided and I also will be providing light breakfast and lunch as well. So it's a three day workshop that I am offering and it's also um, certificate granted or certificate awarded or completion for it. So if you're interested, go ahead and check it out and I will see you guys in the next video.